change of power. And, but there it was, Pluto not a planet, only in New York. <laughs> That's when the mail started coming in. I have a whole file, and it went on for five years. What's this one here? Dear scientist. <laughs> what do you call Pluto if it's not a planet anymore? If you make it a planet again, all the science books will be right. <laughs> do people live on Pluto? If there are people who live there, then they won't exist. <laughs> See, the cause and effect of things are not quite. <laughs> Why can't Pluto be a planet? If it's small, doesn't it mean it doesn't have to be a planet anymore? Some people like Pluto. If it doesn't exist, then they don't have a favorite planet. Please write back, but not in cursive, because I can't read in cursive. I got a whole folder of these things. My favorite comic, however, was this. <laughs> Look at those shoes he's wearing, those little. Near-Earth objects, you know, I, these should not be called near-Earth objects. That's an official phrase, NEOs. They should not be called near-Earth objects because this is what they are, okay? <laughs> I think they just don't want to freak people out. Just a, can I get a little more volume on the mic? Because I feel like it went down a little. <laughs> Just like messing with the sound guy. At that. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a little better. This is what they actually are. Any object that's classified as an NEO has an orbit that crosses Earth's orbit, which means it will one day collide with Earth. It will collide with Earth. It's not just maybe. It will. It's just a matter of when. And we, you know, Earth has, you know, you ever been here? Yeah, it's, it's, Arizona is famous for its holes in the ground. This is one of them. <laughs> this is Barringer Crater. I've been there. This thing is, it freaked me out when I first went as a kid. I, there was a, a, a road trip and went to the Grand Canyon and this. And for me, this just, Grand Canyon was like, okay, okay. You go to this. You know, Grand Canyon was like, took a million years to make. This crater took a 60th of a second to make, all right? It can bury a 60-story building and it's nearly a mile across. Well preserved because it's in Arizona where it doesn't rain much. So stuff gets hit and can get hit multiple ways. This is a, an impact scar on Ganymede, one of Jupiter's moons, and here is multiple hits in a row, like it's sort of carpet bombing. Well, you can have an asteroid break up, typically a comet, break up from tidal forces. Then you have this whole stream of objects. Now, if they all just came straight in, you'd think they'd all just fall on top of each other and make the crater wider and wider. But the object it's hitting is also rotating. So each next piece hits slightly farther in the opposite direction of the rotation. And that's what happened here. So it's not, there's not a question about whether things get hit. And this would be a bad day on Earth right here. <laughs> Artist illustration by uh, Don Davis. And that's, about, that's, that's pretty big, though. That's even bigger than the one that took out the dinosaurs. Uh, yeah, that would, yeah, that's bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, another really bad one, yeah. Let's be a little more realistic. Here's one about the actual size that would have taken out the dinosaurs. The one that took out the dinosaurs is about the size of Mount Everest. And obviously you're just, you're dead if that's where you, if you're standing where it hit. You, you're, you're dead immediately, all right? But, but it killed all the dinosaurs. 70% of all species on Earth went extinct after this thing hit. So, our first indication that local phenomena can create global consequences climactically was gleaned by the computer models that analyzed this. This. Insights from the heavens. I, I once showed this, and someone in, in the front row, not even the back row, 
the front row, raised their hand and said, is that an actual photograph? <laughs> and, and I was ready to just, no, front row people should know better. You know, it's the back row people, uh, front row asked that. I was ready to just give up, we'll just go home. <laughs> then I said, well, let me play with that a little. Yes, it is. The pterodactyl had a digital camera and the chip, we pulled the chip out of the thing and it still had the, you know, where do, how, where do you go with that? Man, you know, we have an asteroid headed towards us. It's called Apophis, the Egyptian god of darkness and evil. <laughs> Not named by accident, that. Discovered in 2004, December. You probably didn't know when it was discovered because it was discovered the same week of the Indonesian tsunami. So rightly, it was buried in the news cycle. However, the reason why this is important is the very first calculation showed that there was something, I forgot the exact number, it might have been like a one in 10 chance that it would collide with Earth on April 13th, 2029. April 13th, which by the way, is a Friday, the 13th. Um, and so, so, this is the size of the Rose Bowl, this thing. And it would be the biggest thing ever known to hit Earth in, in, hist in recorded history. Uh, not, not as big as the dinosaurs, but during human occupation of the world, this would be the biggest thing we would know. So better data came along and we learned it would not hit us then, but it could hit us the next time around. If it threads a keyhole, a very narrow set of orbits, if it has one of those trajectories, Earth's gravity on it would be just right. Just, Earth gravity on it would be just wrong, okay, <laughs> to, to, to bend it in such a way so that seven years later, it will hit Earth. So you wanna make sure this does not go through the keyhole. And we have, we have sort of top people working on this, and one of them is sort of a gravitational tractor beam, where if I'm the asteroid and this is the spaceship, you bring a spaceship close to the asteroid, and then their mutual gravity will want them to come together but you fire some retro rockets to prevent that. And each time you fire the retro rockets, you're effectively tugging the asteroid out of harm's way, gravitationally. You don't have to tug it by much. You move it sideways a little, that amount continues to drift, and it will miss Earth entirely. So this would be a mission of the right timetable to design, build, and send to Apophis to save the Earth. That's what Bruce Willis is for in this case. <laughs> if it goes through the keyhole, it will hit us April 13th, 2036. That's a Thursday, by the way. <laughs> okay. uh, if, it, if it goes through the cent, by the way, the chances of this now, our data tell us is several in a million. So you say, oh, not worry about that. But there are people who buy lottery tickets with worse odds than that expecting to win. So at some point, you gotta sit down and pay attention, even if it's several in a million. So if it threads the center of the keyhole, it'll hit Santa Monica, sorry, it'll hit 500 kilometers west of Santa Monica, plunge into the ocean to a depth of three miles, cavitating the ocean to a width of three miles. It'll explode, that's the cavitating force, and send a tsunami 50, um, 50 to uh, five stories, so 50, 50 feet tsunami, five story tall, that will come to the west coast of North America and basically wipe it clean, okay? And so this hole in the ocean is what made the first tsunami, but then there's the matter of the hole in the ocean. If you're an ocean and you have a big hole, what is the first thing you're gonna do? You wanna fill in the hole. So your water fills in the hole and the act of doing so splashes into the center with such ferocity that it rises high, falls back down, cavitating the ocean again. This will happen about 40 times before it dampens out uh, completely. And so that, that means there are about 40 tsunamis that'll come into the coast. And so they'll come in, it'll go through the million dollar Malibu homes, then the next tsunami say, I need your water please. So then the water goes back out, it takes the home with it, you know? And then the next tsunami comes and brings the home back <laughs> in a slightly different shape, right? <laughs> right? And this continues and all this, what we would call civilization on the coast becomes an ablative churning 
destructive force that wipes the entire West Coast of the United States clean. 